When you're conducting a test of significance, it is essential that you state your hypotheses correctly. So this video will give you a few pointers on that. When you're stating hypotheses, remember, a hypothesis is always a claim about a population. It's never a claim about a sample. It could contain a population parameter, or maybe more than one, but it should never, ever, ever contain any sample statistics. Never. So no sample statistics in your hypotheses ever. It's very important. Secondly, your null hypothesis. It says something specific about the population, such as a parameter has a specific value, or maybe two parameters are equal, or perhaps two categorical variables are independent. When the null hypothesis contains a parameter, it also always contains an equal sign. The null hypothesis generally says there is no difference between some parameter and this value, or there's no effect in an experiment, or there's no relationship, depending on the context of the problem you're working on. That's what the null hypothesis generally says. The alternative hypothesis says something general, such as a parameter is not equal to a specific, specific value, or two parameters are not equal, or two categorical variables are not associated, are associated, rather. And uh, in uh, these situations, we're saying the parameter is not equal to this particular value, but we're not saying what the actual value is. We're just saying it's not what the null hypothesis says in some way. Or we're saying that these two parameters that are equal in the null hypothesis are not equal, but we're not specifying how unequal they are. And if we think that two categorical variables are associated, we're not going to say how they're associated in any specific way. We're just going to give a general statement they're associated, that is they're not independent. Okay, when you write an alternative hypothesis, it always contains a strict inequality sign a less than or a greater than or a not equal to. And uh, whenever there's a parameter in your alternative hypothesis, you'll see one of these symbols. The alternative says typically there is a difference, there is an effect, there is a relationship, depending on the context. Now, you don't always write these this way, but the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis are complementary to each other. They're mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive. They should exhaust all possibilities. Now, in these hypotheses right here, h naught p is equal to 0.4 versus the alternative that p is greater than 0.4, we're leaving out a lot of stuff. All the possibilities that p is less than 0.4 are left out here. That's typically what we do. h naught implicitly contains that possibility that p is less than 0.4. But we generally don't write this sort of thing when we write a null hypothesis. We give a specific value for the null and kind of a vague general value for the uh, alternative. And uh, if the alternative is one-sided like this, it just points in one direction, then the null hypothesis implicitly includes all the other possibilities on the other side of that value from wherever this is. And then when you're writing hypotheses that can't contain parameters, state the hypotheses in both symbols and in words. And uh, the words should cl clearly explain what the symbols mean in a way that clearly defines the parameter and the population to which it applies. Now, there's more than one way to do this, but I'll give you a couple examples that illustrate what I'm talking about. Your Uncle Albert, the family curmudgeon, says the typical high school senior these days can correctly identify only 20 U.S. states on a map, and you disagree. You think that they could do better than that and uh, correctly identify more than 20 states on a map. So this is your, the world according to your uncle, the mean number of states a high school senior can identify on the map is 20. And in symbols, we just write it like this, mu equals 20. We have a mean equals 20. And when we write this in words, we're explaining what that symbol mu means, the mean number of states high school seniors can identify on a map. That's what mu stands for, and that equals 20. The alternative is your idea that mu is actually greater than that. The mean number of states high school seniors can identify on a map is greater than 20. So we have these two different states of the world. Now, your uncle's point of view includes the possibility that mu is actually less than 20, but we don't write that. We just write mu equals 20, and your alternative that mu is greater than 20. Here's a second example. 
in October 2014, 42% of U.S. adults approved of the president's job performance. Has the president's approval rating gone down since then? Well, the null hypothesis is that it hasn't. Okay, there's no difference from what it was in October. So H naught is that P is equal to 0.42. And this P is the percentage of U.S. adults who approve of the president's job performance. And we're saying that that's equal to 0.42 or 42%. The alternative is that the approval rating has gone down since then, so that P is less than 0.42. Less than 42% of U.S. adults approve of the president's job performance. When you get a problem like this and you have to do a test of significance, you're going to get some hints from the way the problem is written as to what the null hypothesis is going to, is going to be. It's going to be a specific value, and you're going to say that the reality is no different from that, and then the alternative will be implicit in some kind of question like this. Do we have evidence that the president's approval rating has gone down? Well, gone down means is less than that. So that would tell you what your alternative hypothesis would have to be. So when you're reading these problems, look for a specific value that could be your null hypothesis value, and then look for some hint as to whether the, uh, um, the alternative should be greater than, as in that case, or less than, as in this case, or perhaps just not equal to. Is there evidence that the president's approval rating is different? That would give you what is not equal sign. It's not equal to sign right there. Um, so what kind of alternative hypothesis you're going to get should be implicit in the question that you're asked. And where the null hypothesis value is going to come from, it's generally the specific value that is quoted in the problem.